alumni call. And you are asking <laughs> But you can't explain what that investment would be for each student. How is how is that fair? Okay, first of all, I'm not saying it's the alumni's fault. I'm saying that alumni who don't give up you part said of the problem. It's part, they're part of the problem. There's no one fault. I said they, they are, are the problem. They're the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going here. I was a part of the student union council. I've worked here. I've volunteered here. I didn't have money to pay for school, and I worked here. And I had meetings with everyone while I was here. I got the honor of being with Sofsky at times. I had the honor of meeting with President Campbell. And yes, nothing was clear to anyone about financial status. However, now you want to go back and be able to put a price tag on people and individualize it. Why, why is, why is that <laughs> even like a thought? So, uh, Educational, but let's have a minute for uh, Mark to give you the answer then. Yeah, I'm not sure, sure how to respond to a, to a speech, um, but and again, nobody's happy about this situation. Nobody's looking to have to do this, but it becomes a money problem. I mean, it's a basic problem. Are your ethics dependent on money? <laughs> My ethics dependent on money? No, but the, the reality of running the school is dependent on money. Professor Grossman! Professor Sarah. <laughs> Because no place else in American academia is it's even understood that we're going to defend it. So I'm very concerned that I've not, anything that I've had tonight or last Friday night, defended that special quality. It's been spoken to very heartfeltly by many students in the whole night here. But the actual specificity of defending it against the world which has no understanding of it and has years and years of practicing the many follies of the tuition based institution until it eventually becomes a profit-making institution, uh, education for profit model, uh, which is happening in institutions all around us, but not here. And so how do we, have we been defending that? Does our own um, staff know how to defend it, which I don't think I've heard, or I don't actually trust that they do? I had an experience about 10 years ago, I'm trying to remember the next day, another time when we were in a crisis, when I had a chance to stand up before a group of presidents of universities who were brought here, and they said to me very directly, um, we're resentful of the Cooper Union. Why should you be the last holdout? And I had an answer then, but I'm not hearing an answer at all from anyone up there. I can, we can all articulate this, so let me just summarize. I'm very concerned in our anomalous state, which seems to be the essential quality of the that we maintain this double meritocracy against the world that's for profit, or at least has that meter running in every decision that they make. By double meritocracy, I mean it's a meritocracy at the time, blind, you use that term blind, but actually that's a term generated from the other institutions. It's very special. Every student knows that they're here only for one reason, and every decision made about them has nothing to do with tuition. And that's a, such a special, extraordinary experience. It creates a esprit de court here that is like none other. And if we can't defend it, then we can't get people to donate. <coughs> There's a direct connection between <laughs>
raises a good one. I mean, tonight's discussion was supposed to be about finance. You raised a different issue. I'm not trying to skirt it. And, and the special quality of cooking is special. Uh, but one thing I'll mention, <laughs> talk about the, the issue of raising, of you know, getting donations and things change. And you may not like hearing this, but the schools that charge forty, you know, fifty, thirty thousand dollars a year for tuition do a better job, or more, more, they get more alumni participation in their giving programs than we do. And that's hard to explain to potential donors. You know, maybe you have an answer to that. I, I put that question to you. I put that question to you. Why do schools that charge forty thousand dollars tuition get a better rate of alumni participation? Because the kids who go there have money to pay for because they come from rich families. No, I think the answer here, I think the answer here is the problem. The issue isn't that we all know the community is free and unique and rare in that special regard. A school that costs money means a student knows the responsibility they have and the That's money of their true. education. That's not true. I think not true. But this is not true. You're expected to give an education. You're expected to just let them go and buy free or whatever. But we have to recognize the rarity of a free tuition school, that it is our responsibility to maintain that as a student body. We are the future alumni and the future trustee members. So there is a sense, and I think, I know this is a great crisis we're in to make this come about, but I think that the reality is it is a unique situation, a unique, a unique school. So we have to react to it knowing that it's extreme. I think that's the, that's the truth of this matter. It's not an issue of whether or not we, we want to maintain the ideology of the school. We all want to maintain the ideology of the school. The ideology, the ideology of the school has changed. Okay. Everyone, everyone. Can, I, can I just say one more thing? I can we can end it. it is, you are here as students on a full tuition scholarship because the alumni and the guests have supported the school. So why don't you want to help future students get the same benefits you have by donating when you're out of the That's the question. Okay, keep, keep your voices down. This is not, I hope this is not the last time we're all going to get together like this. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all very, very much for your <laughs> 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 <laughs>